that they dressed us alike, but they never treated us alike. Never? No. Daddy always much preferred Doris. Every time I would come toward him, you know, Doris would be up on his lap. Did you ever think you would end up here in prison? Mm -hmm. For many years. How many years? Forty. Since you were two or three. I was grateful that we weren't Siamese twins. I mean, when a Siamese kills her twin, she kills herself. File marker 874, Ashby Foundation Research. This is uh, February 7th. The Rockford Prison subject titled Crimes of Passion in the American Family. Every morning, rain or shine, a commuter plane came swooping into our island here in the Puget Sound, and off went my husband and my brother-in-law. My whole family lived here, where my great-grandfather built his first house. I guess it had been going on for a hundred years, women on this island waiting while the men went off. They didn't go to sea anymore, just down to office buildings in Seattle. But in a way, it was still the same. Still about waiting. Wind sure were fluky out here middle of the night. But they settled down around dawn, turned northerly about 15 knots. How was it there? Wait a second. Sure, I'll wait. I'll wait. What, you only have one pencil down there, Herb? They really are cutting you back. <laughs> OK? Ready. OK. Official reading for Shelby Island. Nighttime winds approximately 30 knots. Scattered showers and thunder. Gave way to fog and low clouds around dawn. Bright as a penny now. 8 a.m. reading, 67 degrees. Northerly winds, 10 knots. You ought to bring your gear up. We'll do some fishing. Morning, Pam. You ought to cover yourself up. No one saw me. Oh. Birds in the plane did. Yes, but one of those birds is Nick and the other is Donald. And who are they? Nick and Donald? Nick and Donald? The men your granddaughters married. Hmm. My granddaughters are married. Yes, Pam. We're both married. I never know when you might be kidding. Boys! Boys! What? There's your bus. Eugene, Casey! Come on! Hey! Listen to me, move it! Here, come on! You're gonna miss the bus, move it! Hey, no, wait, wait! Good morning, honey. Come on. Do you sleep well? No, I was worried about those winds. 
Yeah. Those summer storms really are something. Yeah. Mom, you're just murdering that little jade. Come on. Come on, let's go in and get something to eat. Oh, shut up and eat your peanuts. Don't be vulgar, Mom. At least the guys took off. Mm-hmm. Uh, what does that mean? Well, I mean, there could still be serious fog all down the coastline. Mom. It could be very dangerous landing a plane in Seattle today. Mom. I think you and Claire should just put your foot down. Mom, they've never had trouble with a plane before. Poor baby. Come on, honey. Good work, you won. Come on. The race is never over. Good morning, daughter. Good morning. Oh, you smell good. Is that your breakfast? Never mind. <laughs> Mom thinks I'm a poor baby. Well, of course you are. Why today? I just don't think any job in Seattle is worth risking your life twice a day on an airplane. Mm-hmm. See what you mean. Mom, the mornings they have to go by ferry, they lose two hours. You want us never to see our husband? Hey, I love those boys. I am living proof that all mother-in-law jokes are stupid, because they love me, too. They do, don't they? Well, I think they do. And I think I'm very lucky. We all adore you, Mother. Want to have some cinnamon toast, Claire? Mother and I are going to go in and have breakfast. And I ate breakfast. I got a better idea. Let's get a little exercise, row over to Goat Island, and have a picnic. That's great. Do you believe that my mother's making faces at me? Come on, Mom. No, I don't want to. Um, I don't want to alarm anyone, but I did read that all of that taking off and landing is very injurious to the inner ear. Okay, Mom, we're adding that to the list. Don't start on me. Honor's list of 100 things to fear most. The dangers of walking barefoot on the beach at, at night. night alone. Cans. Yeah, the danger of cans left too long in the refrigerator. Pigeons. Pigeons is the one I <laughs> the like. The danger of pigeons. What could she possibly have against pigeons? Pigeons are filthy. That's why. They look good, but they carry diseases. We can wait. Come on. Avery! Just leave her alone. Hi. Hi. Did you get there okay? Yeah, safe and sound. Was it foggy? Mom was worried about you. Oh, I hit the flown. I just lost two hours. And think of all that we managed to do in that time. Can someone hear us? No, no. Then pick up the phone. I hate being on the speaker. Nobody's here. Besides, I like being in your hand. You do, huh? Is this better? Mm-hmm. You gonna be busy today? Yeah, starting already. It's Project Broadsworth. There's a corporate raider that's getting into the act. Oh, it sounds like a big deal. Well, lady, as big deals go, it's a $4 billion job. You'll be late. How do you know that? Four billion dollars sounds Nick, late. we gotta go. Uh, look, I gotta get going, and uh, I am gonna be late, and I don't think I'm going to Where be the able breeds? to get back home. I'll come in. You sure you want to? I'll book a room at the Gregory. I have an interview I can do. Sure. You don't want me to? Uh, well, I'm not gonna be getting out of here until really late. I have uh, an article that Claire gave me about all the places that stay open late. OK, your choice. Look, I love you. What does that mean? Hey, Nick, we got to go. All right, OK. Uh, look, I got to go. I'll see you at the Gregory, all right? I love you. I love you, too. Picking those blackberries. Here we go. Let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, I got some good cream. What you got there? A little antibiotic cream. Do you have absolutely everything in those pockets? Certainly hope so. Oh, it's getting a little hot anyway. Want to take a nice nap? You feel good. Yeah, hurt, you know. It's gonna be okay. No point. In a hurry? 
Not really. I have to catch the 215. Nick has to work late one night. What's a big deal? Never said that was a big deal. The minute he's gone, you're in a panic. What are you afraid of, Georgie? Maybe Mom was right. Maybe that plane could crash land. Or. Or maybe the moment he arrives in Seattle, he could be pounced on, you know, by brazen hussies. Not Seattle, it's only yuppies. All right, brazen yuppies. No such thing as a brazen yuppie. What are you talking about, Claire? Committing adultery. Oh, cut it out. Come on. Georgie knows exactly what she's doing. Women that have been married as long as me and Georgie should be eyeing up the delivery boy. Is that what you do? No. I paint. Ah. Mom, I want to ask you, but I don't want you to get angry. Well, then, don't ask me something that's going to make me angry. Who was she? Daddy's been dead a long time, and we're all grown ups. Alice Biddings. You're kidding. Mrs. Biddings? What about Mrs. Biddings? Daddy. That's who Daddy was. She saying. was a scrawny little... Why her? I hope my mouse. mom's asleep. He, 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 he just needed someone to worship him. I would have divorced him. <laughs> I'm Catholic now. I could have just killed the bitch. I thought about that. It's your father, though. Really, she could have... She could have been anybody. He shouldn't have done that to us. It was humiliating. Did you tell Daddy you knew? Yes, I did. Length. What do you say? He walked into our bedroom and he packed a few things. And he uh, he left. That's it. Well, you know that you know he went to work on that offshore rig. Out there with the men. You never discussed it. Listen, you start out thinking you can can plan the way your life is gonna be. You know how it'll turn out. But uh, things happen. Just do it. Oh, oh. Hey, wait, look, look at us, look at us. More good things have happened to us than bad, right? We live here on our little island, little paradise. Three generations of women all together. I wish one of you'd hurry up and have a girl we could make it for. <clears throat> four generations. Where are you going, honey? To catch the ferry. No, you can't swim the channel without the boat behind you. You'd oh. better wait for us. I don't want to wait for him. Georgie? Georgie, that's not safe. Georgie? Georgie! I never planned to kill Celeste. My hand was stabbing her. Then all of a sudden I realized what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I stopped. It was just too late. Maybe not. You didn't kill her. I was really worried it could be dangerous. Mm -hmm. All that stuff going on inside me. I didn't want to miss Gary. You were pregnant. I still am. Fantasy. 
dream that we could live our lives. Well, maybe not our whole lives, but a month. Just never get out of bed. <laughs> live in bed. Put a little fence around the mattress. Read poetry. Eat. Listen to music. Buck naked. You're not naked. You want me naked? Before room service. My lips are naked. How was your interview? Oh, poor woman, has she got a problem. Tell her to use her gun next time. That's not the problem. She has no husband, and she's about to have another baby. That's a problem. Do you think we should have a baby? <sighs> it's interesting to watch the workings of your mind. It's very subtle. That's an answer? You know I'd like it. It's just that it's unfair, you know, my hours, and you're coming in all the time. Oh, you're really dying to bring that up. No, I said, I think it's crazy. I, every day I'm flying in and out of the island and I'm bringing all that work home for the weekends. And you're rushing in just to have a quick dinner. I like our quick dinners. Well, how are we going to have a baby on top of that? On top of what? Oh, Joyce, you just forget it. You mean we can't have quick dinners and a baby, too? Uh, I, uh, you want me to quit my job? <sighs> I, just... I quit my job. Tonight's not the time to talk about a baby. <sighs> it's just that sometimes I'm tired and I want to crawl back in here and have a quick sandwich. Nervous. There's only 200, what? You know, 150 guests, your boss, and the entire senior staff of Hubbard Store. Can we get dinner? Nah. I don't know. Well, we got the room. Most people haven't seen me on. Besides, I'm a junior partner. It's kind of a Hi, feather. Hi. How you doing? John, Ooh, he's got his cigar. That's a good sign. Oh, Gene Snyder, the only junior partner who gets to fly out with the boss. How'd she swing that? Oh, thanks. Yeah. Said, it? It's Gene. Yeah, I got it. John. <laughs> this isn't everything you promised. Uh, it's good. paradise. Wow. Hi. Hey, hello, Hi. darling. Good to see you. Thanks. John, there, this is it? my mother, Honora Swift. It's truly a pleasure to meet you. You know Pete Margolis and these oh, other goons. <laughs> Excuse me, Gene, I wasn't referring to you. You know Gene Snyder. Hi, how are you? Of course. Welcome, Gene. Oh, hi, hi. Jesse. <laughs> it's Georgie. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Why can't I get that straight? Well, we certainly have a good day for it, don't we? Moderate winds, seven knots. It'll be westerly by noon. Miles of visibility and low tides at dusk. Perfect. How do you know all that? 
Mom's local weather woman. She calls in the readings to the station. Really? Yeah. You do? <laughs> well, <laughs> for now, for now. These satellites are trying to put me out of business. You know, you're not going to believe this, but I find that incredibly well, interesting. What are you doing here today? I had to work on the fourth. Okay. okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Pam, come on. We gotta change you. Okay. I didn't do it. I know. I did okay. Let's all put on that purple dress. I don't like that kind of dress. I've got it. Okay. I don't like that dress. I'd like the one I have. Okay. These guys that think I kiss my wife. Shut up, shut up. What is this? Jeez. Ten thousand dollars in advance? What's that? My research, my videos, they want it for PBS. This is incredible. This... Incredible doesn't cover it. Who's Helen Ashby? She's the head of it. She runs it, you know. Please the Ashby comment Foundation. to your convenience. It's time we be. Oh, <laughs> this is good. Exactly there. Nick, aren't you gonna play? You scared? Understand that? What about excitement or uh, stammering? Uh, slobbering joy? That's change. You know, uh, give me a rut and I'll furnish it. This means that you'll be doing everything you did before, but more of it. And you'll be making money. And traveling a lot more, you know? They want me to go to other cities. Yeah, well, that's. Yeah, I know it doesn't upset you. No, no, it's, it's, it's more to the point that we'll probably be spending more time apart anyway. Who says? I envy you two sneaking off like you're not married. You need some help, Mom? Time for Pam's cake. Okay. Hey, Georgie. Hi. 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 Hope you're not too PO'd with us this time around. PO'd? You mean angry? What a silly idea. Well, I don't know. We're regular CIA this time. You know, keeping a tight lid on. New projects. Oh, you mean Project Broadsworth? Come on, you're not supposed to know the name. We're not even letting the wives go this time. Go where? London. I was gonna talk to her about that, John. Right. Sorry. There's no need to be sorry, please. Why would you be sorry? I mean to get you in trouble with your girl, Nick. <laughs> hey, let's talk about this. Look, it's not you, it's your, it's your, it's your, it's your man, Rice. Yeah, it's kind of old-fashioned. You know, you boys can play CIA, what do I care? You know, put on trench coats and go around the world with fake passports. I don't don't need to be patronized. No, he wasn't patronizing. He was just respecting my right to tell what my wife. What about my right not to be treated like, like some ditzy little housewife? <sighs> it's just nuts about security, and some wives have blabbed in the past. Blabbed? Is that what you no, think of me? I didn't Blab. mean that. Blabbed to who? I didn't... Who? My hairdresser? Yeah, your hairdresser. You Go know, ahead. Tell him I don't have a hairdresser. I tell him I wash my hair in a bucket. We've done it for generations here on the island, all of us women. Hair in the bucket and uh, let the wind dry us like the reeds out there. We're all Amer we're American originals. Why are you sitting in the middle of the lawn? Watching fireworks. Now 
the event we've all been waiting for, Pem's Cake. I made this cake because I've had my ninth birthday on the boat coming here from Ireland. And, and uh, oh, no, 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 that was my mama. She did. Well, well, anyway, it was the 4th of July. It was just before we got into the war the first one, and I made my first cake, and my daddy liked it. And then I married Captain Harold, and he liked it. So I went on making the cake every year after that, and I made the cake. And, and I, I was born in the land of London was always my favorite of all the places they've sent us. Hey, uh, no family this time, just partners. Partners like Jean? They should be one of many. I don't know to make a big deal out of that. How long? Two weeks, maybe three weeks. I'm a little scared in Japan. Here to see Mrs. Ashby? Oh, yes. I'm her secretary. I'm... She should be right out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're Georgiana, obviously. Come. Hello. It's uh, practically unheard of for me to meet grant recipients face to face. I'm very grateful. Maybe it's the video. I feel as if I know you. Shh, we have company. He thinks I'm a parrot. See, we wear the same colors. <laughs> you understand what PBS is after. Oh, well, you can imagine how pleased I was. It's only 10,000. I know that may not match your wildest dream. Well, it comes close. It interests you. Well, the truth, uh, Mrs. Ashby, is Helen. that... Helen. Uh, uh, the <gasps> truth, Helen, is that, uh, well, it does involve a lot of uh, changes in my life, a lot more travel. He's in love with me, aren't you, DJ? What do you think? Hmm, well, my husband is in London right now. We do everything possible to be together, and I guess you could say we're vigilant. I come into town if he's going to be late, and I, I travel with him. He forces you to do this? No, he, he, he calls me, and then my bags can be packed in 10 minutes. How brutal. I don't mind. Well, I meant for him. <laughs>
get the distinct impression you're running away from me. I get the distinct impression I need a shower. What happened with Mrs. Ashby? She wants this photographer, Mark Constable, to take my picture to publicize the series. I think, I think this is a mistake. I, you're not going to be happy with this. Well, I feel like I don't have any choice. I'll get it. Excuse me. Hello? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I've been missing you so much. I was wondering. Is that where I am? Can't prove it by me. I've been locked in. Oh, God, you're still at the office. No, I'm at the hotel, but things got stalled at the office, so I thought we'd pop over to the West End and somehow we had these tickets for Miss Saigon. No, actually, Jean got them. Don't ask me how. Oh. Yeah, she's a character. Uh, Georgie, you aren't saying anything. I know. I'm mulling. I wish I was there. Yeah, I do too, babe. I hate thinking of you in that room in London with Jean. Oh, hey. Hey, hey, hey. She's not in this room. Anyway, I love you. I love you, too, if you can get through that thick head of yours. I'm sorry. It's just that you seem so happy to be there, and I, I can't help it. I'm not happy to be here. It's unfair. Honey, look, I can't deal with this tonight. I'm too exhausted. I just... I just... I'm gonna go sit in the theater and forget about everything. About me. <sighs> oh, God, something bad is happening. <sighs> if you say so. So, what did you tell Mrs. Ashby? I said yes. Okay, okay, okay. Come here. Oh, the ever popular Mrs. Biddings. Are you sure this is... I'm, 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 I'm Mrs. Simmons. Are you sure this is the right room? I'm positive. Thank you. Simmons. You're Mark Constable? Right, first time. We're in no hurry. Oh my gosh. Is there anything I can do? I mean, can you give me some advice? I'm not used to having my picture taken. Don't worry. I'm sure you're very photogenic. So, uh, where are we taking my picture? Well, if you were 70, I'd say the library. But as you're young and pretty, let's try the waterfront. Okay, Georgie. Oh, that's great. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful. It's kind of beautiful. It's very beautiful. 
put you in a landscape and, well, I mean, it becomes transcendental. So, um, Hi. two lattes? Right away. Bet you don't get these in Lebanon. So you know all about me? I know you were there. Helen told me. And, uh, now you live in New York? Sort of. I don't feel very connected there. Not anymore. You have any family? If you mean, do I have a wife, I don't. I didn't. I had one lined up once, but I lost track of her somewhere. At least she stopped returning my calls. <laughs> I think I observe a tough, cynical exterior. It's either that or watching me cry into this latte. <laughs> what about you? Are you married? Yes, he's in London now. I saw some of your pieces. I was impressed. You really report what is. You don't try and interpret. There's a real elegance to that. Going out there and seeing what is. That's what I try and do. Here we go. Here we go. Me that story. Well, it's just one of those things that happens. <sighs> How about one more roll? George is fantastic. What about over here? Oh. In front of these buildings should be interesting. It's beautiful. Would you have dinner with me tonight? Tonight? Oh, I can't tonight. Too bad. I'd have liked that. Well, it's been very nice meeting you. Birdbath needs filling up. Why don't you go fill up the birdbath? Birdbath? Now, Eugene, get out of here. Oh, it's like, it's like I'm wishing he would kiss me. I can just about feel his lips on mine. Georgie, he's not right there, is he? No. But the feeling is. Well, what happened? I told you. He took my picture. <clears throat> That's it? Well, I think he wanted to kiss me, too. <laughs> what would you think if Nick said he felt like kissing that tomato he was with in London? I need your help now. Damn! I don't need to hear things like that. Eugene, get out! Yes, oh, God, I wish I was in Seattle kissing some stranger. Did you get it on video? Not funny, Claire. Jeez, Georgie. Well, come home tomorrow, okay? And bring your sense of humor with you.
advice to Cole. Oh, I had to. I uh, didn't want you going off to photograph the Prince of Siam or whatever without, uh, what is this? This is a filter. It's for photographing clouds. Uh, uh. I'd never use it on the Prince of Siam. Of course. Prince of anywhere. How about champagne? Really? What are we celebrating? Two glasses of champagne. Surprised to see yourself looking so beautiful. Mark, you gotta stop saying things like that. That's three pretties. One beautiful, one gorgeous. Would you care to look at the menu now? Mark, I, uh, I really enjoyed this. So did I. You really are a wonderful woman, Georgie. I like being with you. I'm sorry you're married. I couldn't stand the I think the heat got me. It's not that hot. I'd feel better if I could just get on the ferry. Well, better if I could get you in an ambulance. I'm not an invalid, really. I'm fine. Thank you, Mark. I'll call you in a few days, see how you are. I'll be fine. I'll call you. Don't make it bad. Mom had a heart attack. She's dead. In the hospital. Oh. OK? Oh. She just stood up. She stood up when she was washing pen. And um, she touched her chest a couple times, flexed her arms, and said, I think I'm having a heart attack. You better call Dr. Cook and tell him we're coming in. Cool as ice. Our mother together even then. If I do that, I can't drive. No, you go ahead.
She looks terrible. Worse than this afternoon. You must come later. It's important she rest. Will she be okay? First 24 hours are critical. Oh, this is terrible. I can't tell you how terrible this is. Tell me about it. I'll be home as soon as I can. I don't feel right. The second that I get out of here, maybe tomorrow, and the latest the next day. Are you so afraid that Gene will close the deal? and get all the credit. Oh, come on, Georgie. What credit? Gina's not gonna grab any credit. Ah, don't worry. <laughs> what was that? Gene's just saying that you shouldn't worry about it. She's there? Come on, don't start this. Look, we have two hours to get this counter proposal. Doesn't the woman have a room of her own? Look, one thing that won't change is that I love you. Why do you sound angry? I... I... I know where this conversation is going, and I think I can be home before it's over. You're not hanging up. Look, I love you. Don't, don't, Nick, don't. Tell Honora I love her, please. I'll be there in a minute. Why are you so pink? I have my tan. <laughs> Take that thing out of your nose. No, I like it. It distinguishes me. <laughs> How are you, Mom? I'm fine. Honestly, I, I, I feel a little tired, but I... I yeah, feel just like get out, out, just out of the bed. Mom, we're going Mom, home. What are you doing? We're going home right now. We'll go Pam. in a minute. Mom. No, no, I want to go now. Pam. 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 Mom. Mom. It's okay. It's okay. We'll go it's sit in the okay. waiting room, okay? It's okay. Come on, Pam. Dr. Alden. Uh, I'm worried. Uh, you're looking so much better. Mm. I mean, Pam, I just... I can't bear it if she has to go into some terrible home. Never. We're taking good care of her. Oh, I know you are. For now. But can't forever. You don't have a TV. Oh, no, they won't let you have one in intensive care. They don't want you getting too worked up. <laughs> Good. Protect you from the news. Mm, protect me from old Cary Grant movies. <laughs> I brought you something. What? I was preparing it for your birthday. Oh. Oh. Now you don't think I'm going to be there for my birthday, so you gave it to me early. Mm, yeah. Stop that. <laughs> she needs her rest. OK. Now. Nick sent his love. Now, don't let him come rushing home from London because of this silliness, will you? Oh, don't worry about that. Georgie! Dr. Brown, call extension 5802. Dr. Brown, call extension 5802. Yeah, with that sort of stick and intense. First of all, I'm okay. Hey, what are you doing in that chair? For chair's reasons. They don't want me to walk. Something insane. I can get it from here. See? A patient walks. You nearly gave me another heart attack. Mom. What's that look, Missy? I tell you, I'm fine. Wonderful. 
Where's the boy? He's in London. He should be here. I agree. You're in the family, Lee. What did she say? I don't know. She said what I think she said, Georgie. Pam can tell. <laughs> well, if someone doesn't tell me, I'm getting out of this bed. I'm pregnant. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> so how did Pam know? What did I know? You can see under my skin. <gasps> and uh, they didn't leave a number where they'd gone? Yeah, okay, you might as well. I've left uh, four already. His wife. Huh? My name? He only has one wife. He knows my name. Mother. You're going to have another great grandchild. I'm going to have a baby. Do you know who I am? Claire. No, Georgie. Oh, You're Georgiana Simmons. <laughs> and, um, who am I? Why, why you are my granddaughter. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what pregnancy is? <laughs> it's nine months of misery. <laughs> <laughs> I know you miss Honora, and so do I. Oh. But Nick and I are having a baby. Aren't you happy for us? Oh, of course I'm happy for you. Oh, then why does it make you sad? I, I, I love the island. I love living here. Here. And you'll go on living here. I hope so. Okay. Okay. Yes. Hello, I'm looking for Georgie Simmons. She come on in. Are you? No, Constable. Well, hi. I've heard a lot about you. <laughs> Who's that bird? Oh, Mark, this is my grandmother, Pam. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Georgie, I just remembered. I have to go with Donald to the Mandela's tonight. Well, the, um, I just don't worry. I'll feed Pam. Okay. I started it. It's on the kitchen counter. Yeah, the tomatoes that you were peeling. Mark, would you like to stay to dinner? Well, I should be getting off, but thanks. I'll stay. Great. Okay. You'll be okay. You bet. With him. And nice to meet you, Mark. Thank you, too. Bye-bye. Bye. What's that piece of land over there? Oh. That's Goat Island, and uh, the one with the lighthouse is China Point. What a great place to live here, surrounded by all your family. Yeah. It's like the Kennedy compound. Oh, yeah. We always joke about that. I think I'm Ethel. It's come for me to state my case. I don't want to beat around the bush anymore. I can tell. Georgie, I've fallen in love with you. And I don't fall in love every day. At least I don't think so. I've wanted to call you every hour on the hour for the last two days. Well, if I hadn't come out here to tell you this, I would have kicked myself. <laughs> I mean, there was a chance. A slight one. But there was a chance. I'm sorry. Hey, hey, Georgie! Ha, ha, ha.
Oh, God, I missed you so much. Oh, God. I just here for the day, though. The day? Yeah. I have something wonderful to tell you. Yeah, I tried to call you, you know, the transaction broke Don't you want to get your bags? Nah, I'll leave it. I had to grab this cab, and then I got the flight. Nick, this is Mark Constable. Mark, this is my husband, Nick Simmons. How'd you do, Nick? It, uh, it's Mark? Mark is a photographer who took my picture for the New York Times. Well, I suppose I'd better go. Mark came all the way out here just so I could have some of his pictures, and I invited him to stay to dinner. And, Georgie, dinner was delicious. Thank you. Well, I'll just get my bag. Why don't you have a cup of coffee or something? What's this for? Go back to work till eleven. Oh, really? Tonight? Huh. Well, perhaps another time, Georgie. Right. So, aren't you going to ask about Honora? Yeah. That's why I'm here. Well, how's she doing? She's much, much better. She looks much better. Great, great. Yeah. She just strange the way you hurried off like that. I think it was quite considerate. Really, it was? Giving us time off here. First night back. What are you upset about? It's ridiculous. You know, wasting time your first night back. We're talking about a, some man who was nice enough to come all this distance to bring me a picture. Some man? You don't uh, remember his name? Mark. Mark Constable. Nervous guy. It's understandable. It is? Yeah, well, you seem nervous. It's because he has the uh, smallest little crush on me, and it shook him when you came home. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to bolt out the door. I mean, he knows you're a married woman. Right? Obviously, it's, it's just that he thought that, you know, and I thought you were in London. So? Maybe it's more than a little crush. He told me that he's, uh, crazy or something. He's in, in love with you, in a way. What? Jeez, how long has he known you? I told you about me in the middle of traffic, feeling like a model. It was an intense time. It was fun in a way. Racing around the city, and then the next day he asked me out for lunch, and I figured, why not? People have lunch all the time. Yeah. All I ordered the, the sole manier. It was nice, fresh, maybe a little too much butter. It's too bad. You hate the buttery sole. Well, and after lunch, you know, we went outside and we were standing on the sidewalk, and then he kissed me. You kissed him? God. You kissed him? No, he kissed me. Oh, Jesus. But I wasn't totally unwilling. I can't believe you, you kissed him. I, I can't well, believe that. It wasn't him. I wasn't kissing him. Yeah? Who else was there? Well, it was me, really. I was kissing myself. Uh-huh. No. He called me pretty three times. I had a sudden attack of narcissism. He was, I, I was kissing my own reflection. God, I hate that you kissed him, you know? I love you. I love you. It wasn't him. Oh, look what the cat dragged in. Ah. God, I could kill that peroxided little bastard. He doesn't peroxide his hair. Well, men shouldn't have hair that color. At least I don't think he does. You mean the whole time this hot romance was going on, there I was, I was busting my tail, locked in a room. Locked in a room with Jean Snyfert. What? You mean to say you never even looked twice at her? That? Oh, geez, looked at her? Yeah. <laughs> she tried to give me a back rub once, and I had to kick her shaped little butt right out the door. Oh, I'm sorry, No, Ken. don't I'm apologize sorry. on Why my behalf. Shouting? What? Oh, I got her out of there, right? It could have turned into, uh, who knows? It could have been a full body rub. It doesn't matter. Oh, well, well if we're talking about Gene Snyder's full body, it matters a lot. Wait a minute. I didn't forget my marriage commitment. <laughs> Oh, you regret it, don't you? Kicking Gene out, shapely little butt and all. I jumped over to the Atlantic Sea Honor and what? I walk in on candlelight and uh, my wife was some big time kisser from back oh, east. Just answer me just once that you really don't regret it. Look, if I hurry, I can catch the last ferry and then I'm gonna be in London by the morning. This minute you're going. With Jean. I... I don't know what I expected, Georgie, but it wasn't this. Oh, you know, don't do this. Don't do what? Don't travel. Don't do my job. Don't get upset because you behave like a neurotic brat. I didn't know that's, that's how you feel. Oh, how could you? You're like Radio America. You block out everybody else's signal. I get through with what I feel.
What's gonna happen? Where's the boy going? To London or somewhere. Captain Harold disappeared on the on the China run. I know, Grandma. I was born in 1905. Captain Harold went down in the China run. 1931. Pam. What? I'm older than you were when you lost your husband. Oh. No. I don't think so. You were? I mean, I am. Trouble finding you. Oh, hi, honey. Oh, listen, I want to thank you for this tape. It's so wonderful. Uh, you've got a TV. Yeah. It means you're better. Oh, cheers at the cops. No more visiting tonight. One minute with my daughter, and I promise you I will eat lime jello. You have 53 seconds. Oh, you <laughs> look. What a beauty. Ah. <laughs> That old square <laughs> smile. What the hell is a square smile? Look at Pam. Before Nick met you, it was the one thing I told him to look for. You told him what? Your lips go straight across and turn up at the ends. That'd be the first thing he noticed about you. Poor Nicky. Oh, George, you, what's the matter? I think Nick wants to leave. Oh, honey. You're making honey, him miserable. I, I doubt that very much. I didn't mean to. Honey. I just caused him so much pain. If you could have seen his face, oh, God, it was absurd. He'll be home soon. He was here. I chased him away. You what? It's true. He came just to see you, and now he's back on a plane. He's oh. just... Georgie. He's my Siamese twin. If anything happens to him, it happens to me. That's what I think. Maybe it was the tension between Tim and me. No, no. I used to. I used to go in your nursery way before that. You'd be lying there. Your eyes wide open. Not, not, not crying or anything. Just looking worried, being vigilant. You have such wide, dark eyes. I... Hair on my neck used to stand up. What was I afraid of? God knows. Do you think I'm crazy? Well, not unless we're both crazy. Oh, Mom. Did you ever think maybe we are? Both crazy? No, frankly, I didn't. George, you've got to stop this. Try to look at it through my eyes. More good things have happened to us than bad things in our life. That's a fact. I mean, it, it doesn't do any good to concentrate on, on things that are going to happen. And look, we have our eye on we have it, and it's a paradise, oh. Georgie. It is. We have three generations of women on that island, all of us living together. Mom. Georgie, it could be four. Four generations of women living on the island. Mom. That would be something. There's something wrong with this paradise. There are no men in it. I mean, God Almighty, do you know Captain Harold died when Pem was 26? Why didn't I ever figure this out before? She's been a widow for 60 years. Yes. And Daddy went to work on the offshore rig. You know, you know where Daddy went. Yes. We didn't even get to be with him when he died. Are you blaming me for that? Oh, Mom, I don't blame. I don't blame. I, I just want my husband back. I just want 
Yeah, three generations. Why not ten generations? But, 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 but men and women. Two and two. Like on the ark, you know? Listen, I didn't want an island without men. I thought I had a happy marriage. I know that, Mom. When he left, I was... I was devastated. I know. No, you don't. No, you don't know. Did you know I was on the radio the night of the storm? No. Well, I was. You never told me anything. Weather Bureau kept calling me every 30 minutes. I wanted readings. And it was every 10 minutes. I just kept up like that the whole night. It was a duty night, of course. Would have been once the storm moved in. Then the Bureau lost contact. You know, with the rig out there where your daddy was. The radio had gone down. You know, I could chart that storm on my map from the readings all the way through it. I knew just where it was all the time. I knew just when it was over him. I knew it right then. Then it was morning. The storm passed. Very quiet. I picked up the phone and I called the Coast Guard and they told me. That's how I found out. No surprise. No surprise at all. The whole rig was gone. sign of it. Nothing floating. It's gone. I love you. Oh. I love you so much. Did you see Honora? Yes. How's she doing? She looks like the old Honora. That's great. You know what I was thinking on the way home? What I was going to say with the flowers I was sending to your hotel. I could only think of something direct, like, I'm sorry I hurt you, real sorry. wanted to come home and beat your wife. Damn, why didn't I think of that? Can't hit a woman in my condition. What's that? Mental instability? We're having a baby. Beautiful. It's okay. You're happy. Yeah, I 
knew that something was going on. I knew this. You know, I was felt driven. I had to get out of London. I had to get on a flight and get you in my house before midnight if something was going to happen. Like, I was going to die or something. I really did. I had this constrict. It's like a constriction in my throat, like I was going to choke or something. Here, Jean, come help us light this. Georgie's out skinny dipping with some guy. Naked skinny dipping? Is he blonde? It's too dark, I can't tell. Here, give me those. Oh, it's Nick. It's Nick. <laughs> when did Nicky get back? Kick. <laughs> Casey, it's not big enough. Where's the boy been? I've been to London to see the Queen. Oh, I could smash you. <laughs> Seven five one. What's this? Yeah. She just died. Honor Swift never came to me in the usual way. She saw no need to come visit God in his own house. But once in a while, she would pass by and ask if I'd like to go for a walk. Who would turn down a walk with Honor? She showed me things I never knew existed, like the Beaver's Dam on Gill River, the house of a lady who collects nuts and charges admission to see them. She felt that all of the outdoors was loud, the language of God. And she heard it often and clearly. Honor a Swift, the lover of her family, the embodiment of love, love given and love received. He didn't want to come visit God in his house, so he has come here to meet you on your shore, on your familiar island. He has come to lead you to his. left the dock at Fort Townsend. Mm -hmm. And then one went, to, one went to Bainbridge, the other went to Vancouver. And if you didn't get there at nine, mm -hmm. the place would be jam-packed. We buried Honor today, Pam. You know, the ferry, Do you remember? You know, the ferry, the ferry to Bainbridge Island went across that way. Yeah. And if you didn't get there at nine, you didn't get a seat. <laughs> yes, I remember. 
I remember. Like you said, it's that old square smile. What if the tree dies, Georgie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, this is not the time for humor. What's wrong with humor? I mean, we're planting this tree for honor and. No, it's part of the process, Georgie. You think? Yeah, it's like yeast. You have to throw it in, mix it up with all the <laughs> ingredients, or else everything becomes about grief and sadness. And sadness. We're orphans, really. George, I mean, truly and literally orphans. It's time to be sad. We have been sad for years, baby. You think? Ever since Daddy walked out. I always thought that was my fault. What, that Daddy left? I thought if he truly loved me, he would stay because he loved me. Baby sister. If it was anybody's fault, it was his. Or maybe it was hers, who knows? What? Pem smells funny. Yeah, so where's Loretta? I don't know. She's not due for half an hour. I'm making it hotter. Oh, you're scalding me. Right, now hold it, I'll fix it. You're a damn liar, I'll smash you. Pem, when you get out, we'll give you a martini. Oh, that's my corrupt. God, I, I'm freezing. Oh, well, that's going to fire that nerve. We can't, she's the third one we hired this week. Can you imagine Mom doing this alone? No wonder she, you say no wonder she had a heart attack that would kill her. Hey, it might have made a difference. We could have helped her. They didn't want any help, not these two. They were a closed corporation, weren't you, Pam? Claire, if that's the way you feel, just get out. We can take care of her. Ow! God, she bit my ankle. We? Nick and me, we can take care of Pam. Okay. Nick may be an altar boy, but I don't see him standing in this filthy water bathing in an altar boy. Don't call my husband an altar boy. Oh, no, you're right. He's not an altar boy. He's a What are you trying to say? Nick plays by the rules, Georgie. Some men don't. They cheat. They learned it from their daddies, maybe. I don't know. Donald cheated. Donald had an affair? I told Mother I wouldn't say anything. But yes. Donald had an affair! Oh. Oh, Claire, how terrible of him. You sound like your mother. I asked you girls to wait for me. She had an accident. You could have waited. Good morning, my little sweet cake. Are you ready to get out of here? Uh -huh. We're planting a tree for Honora. When Loretta gets you dressed, will you come help us? Don't be upset, little Claire. Donald had an affair. She was listening. Of course she was listening. She's not dead. And Harold was gone eight months out of the year. Out in China. I always thought he had a China girl. Loretta, why don't you do the laundry? I didn't know for sure. But he got letters. I never. They were written in, in the foreign writing, and I never understood them. didn't have some cute little kiss after lunch affair, either. It was a six-month, fully catered event with a woman in his office. They were in love. And I never noticed. Oh, you noticed. You'd see me crying, I'd say it was my period. Yeah, I had my period about 41 times last year. And Mom? Kick him out. You don't need this. And I agreed with her at first. But then he convinced me he wanted just me and the boys. You believed him? I believe me. I like Donald. 
want him around. And I explained to Mother that he's my husband, not hers, and I'll keep him if he wants to stay. And he did. She didn't have much time for him after that. Great. <laughs> I spill my guts all over the ground. You've got nothing to say. Claire. I owe you an apology. You gotta apologize to your husband, Georgie. He's the only man in the history of this family who hasn't committed adultery. Our chapel is right over here, and we have a gift shop. This is the Rose Wing. Hi, Della. This is a typical room, semi-private. You'll notice they're each decorated a little differently. We try to make it as home-like as possible. This is the nurse's reception area. Hi. The dining room is right down there. Uh -huh. And this is the TV room. Tea. You we have, have a tea. We have a tea. Okay. Bingo wheel. We have special events every afternoon. Bingo, travel logs, reading groups. Isn't it cruel to have travel logs when they'll never travel again? Some of them enjoy reliving their memories. Well, we'll take some time and think it over. It's fine. Sign the papers. I thought we were going to look at some others. I can't take singing anymore. Honor roll, I hate it. Stop it. Him will. Hi. All right. Now watch your feet. What? Yeah. Thank you. What's this? All right. You've been hurting yourself, Pam. And they'll take better care of you here. It's true. You can come visit us on holidays and weekends, whenever you want. And, and Pam, I think you'll make a lot of friends here. This minute, or it's gonna be all right, babe. You know what's all right? Yeah. I'm no longer afraid of Gene Snyder. Wow, that's a relief. I don't know what you were afraid of in the beginning. No, wait a minute. I know you think I'm nuts, but 
And I, I may still be scared of the Gene Snizers of the world, and that's okay, but what's crazy is telling you and telling you and telling you. I think it's crazy to be worried about in the first place. Yeah. No, that's who I am. But... I, 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 every morning I'm going to wake up and I want to think about other things too. About my beautiful baby. About how much I love you. About my family. They, they love me a lot. And about the work I get to do. Yeah. You don't ever have to worry about me, babe. Well, of course I won't. I mean, no. I mean, assuming you haven't given me reason. I mean... You haven't, have you? Sometime when I wasn't aware. No, don't, don't, don't. don't I don't want to hear. I'm too healthy. Did you think it was like Honor said, Paradise? Well, I loved you. And everybody else? Yeah, Honor, I loved her too. You did, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And Pam, mm -hmm. she's my girl. Claire, we have to spring Pam. You serious? We're bringing her home. I thought we decided to. Four able bodied adults, we can handle one infirm little grandmother. Let's go. She would have been happy. She wanted one of us to have a daughter so there could be four generations of women at the point. When I told Pam the baby was named Letitia after her own mother, she smiled a long time before she forgot. <laughs> 